Today we're taking a look at an alternate version of exercise 11-18 from page 523 of the textbook, chapter 11, Reporting and Analyzing Equity. This exercise is on cash dividends, treasury stock, and the statement of retained earnings. Before you take a look at this video, I highly recommend that you go back and look at exercise 1110 video. In that video, I demonstrate how to solve for transactions involving treasury stock, and I use T accounts to help further explain the increases and the decreases to the treasury stock account and also to the additional paid in capital treasury stock account. I won't use those here, so be sure you go back to look at 1110 to familiarize yourself with treasury stock transactions. In this transaction here, we're going to look directly at cash dividends, treasury stock, and statement of retained earnings. The problem reads that Alexander Corporation reports the following components of stockholders' equity on December 31st, 2015. So they have common stock, $750,000. You should know by now how they determine that $750,000. $25 par value times the number of shares issued and outstanding. Paid in capital for $75,000. Retained earnings $300,000. Total stockholders' equity $1,125,000. In year 2016, the following transactions affected its stockholders' equity account. Let's take a look at the first one. On January the 2nd, it purchased 3,000 shares of its own stock at $25 cash per share. We're asked to prepare the journal entries, and let's do the journal entry for the January the 2nd transaction. In the January the 2nd transaction, when the company buys back some shares of its stock, it's going to give up cash, and it's going to receive treasury stock. How much cash will they give up? Well, that's for the number of shares times the price they paid, or in this case, $75,000. So cash gets credited for $75,000, and treasury stock gets debited for that same amount. So treasury stock is debited for $75,000, and cash is credited for $75,000, and this transaction was to show the purchase of the treasury stock. The January the 7th transaction, the directors declare a $1.50 per share cash dividend payable on February the 28th, so they're declaring it now, January the 7th, it's going to be paid out February the 28th. And who's going to get some dividends? Everyone that owns stock through February the 9th. That was the date of record. So remember what happens here. On the date dividends are declared, the company becomes legally liable for those dividends, so retained earnings are reduced right away. We're going to debit retained earnings by the amount of the dividend. So how do we calculate the dividend? Well, it'll be the 27,000 shares of stock. Well, wait a minute here. It said they had 50,000 shares authorized plus 30,000 shares issued and outstanding. So why isn't the buck 50 being paid on that? Well, because how many are really issued and outstanding after the treasury stock transaction? Oh, we bought back some stock. So now what's really issued and outstanding, there's only 27,000 that's outstanding. They've issued 30,000, but only 27,000 of that is outstanding. The company doesn't pay dividends to itself, it just pays dividends to the stockholders. So retained earnings gets debited 27,000 shares times $1.50 per share. And remember that's going to get credited to an account called common stock dividend payable, or as I abbreviated here, just common dividend payable. They're not getting that dividend now, are they, on January the 7th when the board makes that declaration? No. When are they going to get the cash dividend? When do stockholders get their money? On February the 28th, if you own stock by February the 9th. So this first transaction on January the 7th is what type of transaction? It's recording on the date of declaration. Now let's look at the February the 28th transaction. It says paid the dividend declared on January the 7th. So now that common dividend payable is going to go away, right? Common dividend payable is going to go away in the amount of $40,500. And what are the comp what's the company sacrificing on February the 28th? It's sacrificing cash in the amount of $40,500. Now let's move into the July 9th transaction. Here the company is now selling some of the treasury stock that it purchased back on January the 2nd. So remember they purchased 3,000 shares at $25 per share. They're getting rid of 1,200 of those. And looky here, 
they're selling them at 30 bucks. So are they making some money or losing some money on the sale of these shares of Treasury stock? Well, they're making some money. They're making $5 per share. So remember what accounts involve when you make money on the sale of Treasury stock? Additional paid in capital Treasury. So the accounts that will be involved will be Treasury stock. We're going to take the money out of the Treasury stock account at the value that it went into the Treasury stock account. We're going to record the kicker in the additional paid in capital Treasury stock account. And also we're going to record cash for the amount of cash we receive. Let's do the cash transaction first. So cash goes up, right? Companies sold the stock, they got cash. 1,200 shares is what they sold at $30 per share, so they get $36,000 of cash. Treasury stock, we're going to credit Treasury stock to take those shares out of the Treasury stock at what price? The price they went into the Treasury for. So we're taking them out at $25 per share for 1,200 shares, so $30,000 will be the credit to Treasury stock. Are we finished yet? No, we got to record the kicker. Remember, we sold it at a premium. We sold it for $5 additional paid in capital, so $5 times the $1,200 is $6,000 gets credited to additional paid in capital. Okay? Very good. Let's move on to the August 27th transaction. We sold some more of the shares. So we sold 1,500 of those shares. Now we're selling them at $20 per share. Ooh, what happened here? Do we make some money or lose some money? We bought them at 25, we're selling them at 20, so now we're losing $5 per share. So we're gonna use up some of that previously gained additional paid in capital. We're also gonna to have to maybe use a plug, and if we have to plug things, what are we gonna plug? Hopefully you said retained earnings. So let's record the cash though, because we get cash first. We're getting cash for the 1,500 shares at the $20 per share, and that's 30 grand. Let's go ahead and take the shares out of the treasury at the price they went into the treasury for. So 1,500 shares at $25 per share for $37,500. Let's go ahead and use up the additional paid in capital amount, whatever we can. There was 6,000, we're gonna to need to use all that because we're out of balance here, 7,500. So let's debit and use up all of the paid in capital treasury stock account. And the plug is going to be to retained earnings. Retained earnings for 1500 and that balances out the transaction. So the sale of treasury stock, we looked at that as I said earlier in exercise 1110. I put some T accounts up to help better illustrate that. Go back and take a look at that if you're still a little bit unsure about how to record these treasury stock sales and the use of paid in capital and retained earnings. Let's move on and take a look at the next transaction on September the 9th. So on September the 9th, the directors declared a $2 per share cash dividend payable on October the 22nd to the September the 23rd stockholders of record. So now we got to do a little bit more math. What is the amount of the dividend? Well, the dividend is going to be on 29,700 shares. Hmm, how do we get that? Well, remember, we had 30,000 shares that were issued in outstanding. We bought back 3,000 shares, so what did that change to our outstanding? It only had 27,000 outstanding. But then as we started selling off some of those treasury shares, it increases our outstanding again. Remember, we bought 3,000 back. We sold how many? 2,700. So there's only 300 that still is being reduced. So the 30,000 minus the 300 that are still the treasury means that dividends will be paid on the difference. 29,700 shares. Times that $2 price per share, the amount that dividends, I'm sorry, that retained earnings get debited for then, 29.7 times $2, going to debit retained earnings for $59,400. Is the company going to give up cash? Are we crediting cash right away on September the 9th? No. What are we going to credit instead? Common stock dividend payable. Correct. So the dividend payable, that's an IOU. We're going to pay that in the future. When do we close out that dividend payable? Well, when those dividends get paid out in full on October the 22nd. The date of declaration says we have an IOU that's being created. How much is the IOU? $59,400.
Let's take a look now at the October the 22nd transaction where they pay the dividend. So now that common dividend payable, that credit for 59400 it's going to go away. How do we make it go away? We debit common dividend payable for 59400 And then finally, the company is going to sacrifice that what liquid thing called cash. We're going to sacrifice cash of $59,400 as well. And that's the October the 22nd transaction. Finally, on December 31st, close the 52,000 credit balance from net income to the income summary account to retain earnings. Okay, so what's going to be involved here? Well, on December 31st, the income summary account, we're going to be closing the 52,000 credit balance from net income in the income summary account. We're moving that to retain earnings. So we're going to have to debit income summary for 52,000. Why? Well, because income summary is a temporary or nominal account. It has a credit balance of 52000 How do you make a 52000 credit balance and income summary go away? You give income summary a debit for 52000 And what are we going to close that account to? Retained earnings for 52000 And that's the last transaction to close the income summary account. Now let's look at the next part. It says part two. Prepare a statement of retained earnings for the year ended December 31st, 2016. So Alexander Corporation is the company we've been dealing with. Retained earnings as of December 31st, 2015 at the beginning of the year. We want to be able to know what that was. And that's just a recap from the stockholders equity section that we reported on the very, very first slide common stock of 750,000. Remember 30,000 shares were what was outstanding at the beginning of the year or the end of last year which was December 31st, 2015. Paid in capital was 75,000. Retained earnings 300,000. Stockholders equity totaled 1125. That's the exact same thing we saw on the very very first slide for this problem. So we had any retained earnings then of $300,000. We will add to that our net income. I remember how much net income we moved out of income summary? 52,000. So there was 52,000 of net income. That would give us then a subtotal of 352,000. And then we'll need to back out of that all of the cash dividends that were paid throughout the year. And remember dividends were paid twice. Do you remember the amounts? Well here are the transactions. On January the 7th, we paid dividends of 40500 And on September the 9th, we paid dividends of 59400 So how much are we going to totally subtract out of retained earnings for our dividends? Well, it's the sum of these two dividend distributions. And that equals $99,900. So we'll subtract out dividends. And that'll give us one more thing to subtract out. The Treasury stock reissuances. How much do we reissue for treasury stock? Well, altogether we had treasury stock that was reissued. And there was 1500 that we took out of retained earnings for that reissuance. That leaves us ending retained earnings on December 31st, 2016 of $250,600. So then our statement of retained earnings will look like this. The beginning of retained earnings of $300,000. Add to it our net income of $52,000. Subtract out the cash dividends of $99,900. Subtract out the amount of retained earnings that had to be used up for the stock reissuance. That was $1,500. And that gives us now an ending retained earnings of $250,600. Wow. So with that, we can finally, finally prepare the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2016. So for Alexander Corporation, they had common stock, $25 par value, 50,000 shares authorized, 30,000 shares issued, but how many are now outstanding after the purchase of Treasury stock and then the sale of Treasury stock? Well, they still have 300 shares in the Treasury, so there's only 29,700 shares outstanding. That value is $750,000. Paid in capital excess of par, $75,000.
and that hasn't changed either. Both the 750 in common stock and the 75,000 paid in capital, the exact numbers from before, on the very, very first slide that we did for the problem. Take a look at retained earnings and bring that down now for 25600000 dollars Subtotal of million seventy five six hundred less the treasury stock that is still outstanding those 300 shares at $25 per share or 7500 and then we'll have total stockholders equity of $1,068,100. This is a very comprehensive problem. I encourage you to go back and view it again.